Then the jealous, jealous, jealous was cold too. I remember me and Tebow in the studio drunk as a motherfucker, boy. We were drunk. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm gonna tell you something about Tebow, bro. Tebow a white boy, but when I be around Tebow, I feel like I'm around another black dude. I ain't gonna lie. Tebow used to have me in the goddamn woods with all them white boys. Them dudes, I feel safe. I feel so I feel so safe with them dudes. Like, like, I don't know, man. I can't, I feel the peace with Tebow. Like Tebow was a real one. Like, yeah. You know, like Tebow, like you, you ever be around somebody like you like he was a fan and he was just a cool dude. Like he was like like Tebow would always be happy. Even to the day, probably if I see him, he just always was happy to be around me. Like, and then we develop a relationship where I was like that too. Like I could go to the studio. Like Tebow was one of the very few people I was recording with him and Slay Sean when I was deep in that family stuff. When I was deep in the family stuff, Tebow would call me. And I come over there to the shed with him and SCC, and we'll do some hot ass. Man, Tebow did some hot. You know, we still got to do that Bill of the Kid Doc Holiday. Album. We got to get that to the world. Yeah. We have to recreate that magic because we didn't did that magic in a long time. But uh, I'm sure we can. You put that music on. Here we go. We will recreate. I recreated. I got one. I sent them. Matter of fact, I sent Tebow one about a month ago. Okay. A T-boy call you drunk about three in the morning, telling y'all, but you love you, love you, man, love you, bro. <laughs> I say, I love you too, bro. I love you too. I love you too, Billy the Kid. But yeah, so, you know, it's like, a, it's, it's just real. Tebow, one of the real ones, man. Like when everybody was after my head, you know, a lot of people was, I don't know, man. I just, I think at the end of the day, I was a downtown rapper. I was representing the Auburn Bill. They had so many of the famous rappers in New Orleans from Uptown. And I did this song called Downtown. Before Chopper hit the radio, I had this song called Downtown. You know, that's on the Shed Tears album. Okay. Well, I said, what you mean you don't sell your dope to niggas from downtown? It was kind of like I was talking to Birdman because he was like, we only sell dope to niggas from uptown. So when I got a chance to get my album, I did a little thing talking to them. But I'm going to tell you a secret about that too. I don't want to jump the gun because you probably got that coming too, but Birdman and Slim, them dudes was like family to me too. Those people don't know. When I was young, I went rap for them. I went rap for them. We had a rap on my project. The first big rapper came out of the Auberville was PMW. Pass that weed to the, I got that red hot sass with the big old bud. And I keep a little stamp that under the rug. He was cold. He had a cold song. Uh, he was with Cash Money. And I used to always tear his ass to pieces. He'll tell you if he tell the truth. I used to freestyle everything. I never wrote nothing. And he brought me the Cash Money one day. But what happened, UNLV was hot at the time with that kind of gangster bounce. So I went up there, I thought that's what he wanted to hear. I started freestyling some gangster bounce. I ain't rap better than gangster shit that I rap all day. <laughs> I started doing some gangster bounce. I'm, I'm a Aubrey Bill, nigga. <laughs> so they say, man, you got the voice. We just need to see what style we gonna use. They say, come back another time. They always did like me, like since, since I was younger. But when they heard me again with, with Rafera, I never forget we was um the dude Chuck who owned Big Boy Records, all of them was trying to get get with Rafera. And then baby them at the same time, at the same time I was negotiating to go to No Limit, the CEO of Rafera was negotiating me to go to Cash Money. My story deep. Crazy. And baby and Slim will tell you, cause Slim's still cool right now. You know, that's my dog. Let me tell you something. I ain't had no problem with them dudes. When I did that, it's war. I did that because I chose No Limit, and at the time they was having problems. So I just wanted to show Pete that I was I, I was playing for this. I was I was gonna I, ask you about that if that was something that um like the Colonel gave the order for or something. No, just... no, he never gave the order. I just wanted to show him where my loyalty was. That was it. But I never had no problem with um Slim or uh, uh, they they legends from our city. Them dudes is kings. You know, cash money, no limit. Them dudes made it. Them dudes came from the same projects all us come from. And them dudes made it. They heroes, yep. you know, in the city. You know, that wasn't nothing personal for me, to be honest with you, to tell you the truth. Before I went to No Limit, when cash money got their deal, I went to all the parties. They used to invite me and let me in free. We used to laugh. I used to drink for free. I had a good time. I was hot in the city. But they was, they had the money. They had everything. Them dudes never treated me bad. Only one I think I never really had a relationship with was Manny Fresh. And he was from downtown, but I just never had a relationship with Manny. Before it's Slim and, and uh, Baby, I used to talk to Baby on the phone and everything. But I just wanted to go to No Limit because of C Murder and P. I just thought they kind of, I thought C, C and P kind of just was a, a mirror of me. Like I, I with the gold teeth and just thugging, 
I just thought that was just like, I think it's you. I don't know, just wilding out how P used to jump around and C used to jump around. That was me. I, Baby and them had their thing going too with the cars and the jewelry. But I just wasn't, I wasn't on that. And then like in the city, you know, it was like, you know, um, people was getting high and all that type of shit. I just, I just wasn't, you know, I was around. I was really in the streets, so I know who was doing what. So I just wasn't, you know, some of the rappers and shit. I just wasn't with it. You know, kind of was, and, and, and it might've been my, my daddy from the Calio, so that might've been something too. Like my daddy from the Calio, P daddy from the Calio, Bias from the Calio. You know, I used to be in the Calio as a kid, but my grandma, my daddy, mama, I think I, you know, half of my blood is Calio. And so all of that probably was, that probably played a big thing too, you know? Half of me is Calio. My my daddy is, is from the Calio, born and raised in the Calio. So grew up with P daddy. So at the end of the day, that's, that's where my heart probably was. Yeah. But when I look at it, it could have went either way. You know, either way, if I'd have went, it would have probably been better for Rough Era if I'd have went to Cash Money because they would have had a district. Baby would have gave him a distribution deal. See what I'm saying? They, they would have got more out the deal. But right before that, me and the CEO of Rough Era, we had a fist fight. So once me and him had that fist fight, we had a fist fight for some bullshit. So once we had a fight, you know how that go. I'm going to do my own thing. Now I'm ready to go. So... I sped up everything. Game over. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Peace, family. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And check us out on BoutTheOnline.com. Also, check us out on Facebook for exclusive lists and new content. And don't forget, as I said, like, share, subscribe. Peace.